what we're going to talk about, the bridges of Konigsberg that is the heading over there, what we're going to talk about is this city for a little bit. So this is a really old picture, as you can probably tell. Um, you can see the title up there at the top. This used to be a Prussian city. Um, I don't know, how many, who studies modern history here? Anyone? Are, they, is you, are you guys doing like Bismarck and that kind of thing, or not really? Yeah, it's all different areas. Go on, Zim, grab a seat, quickly, please. So Prussia was an ancient area, sort of, it's right in the middle of Europe, really, but it got sort of subsumed by Russia. And um, so this actually is now called Kaliningrad. So same place, different name. Okay. Now, this city is really famous, and we're going to study it this period for a few particular reasons that I'll tell you about later. But for now, I just want to actually show you why this city is interesting. Um, what you've got is all of these buildings, and if you squint hard, you'll see there's like waterways through here. Do you see them? Can you make them out? I know it's black and white, it's not that easy. Um, and then these waterways, many of them have bridges over them. Do you see that? Right. Now, I've got, because I thought it was pretty hard to see, I've just redrawn this, right? And what I've highlighted is where the water goes. So you kind of have like this island, good morning, these island sort of areas in the middle, and then you've got these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bridges, okay? The bridges of Konigsberg, okay? Now, what people wondered about for a long time, for decades when this city was born was, just a really silly, random, playful question. No particular, like, problem they were trying to solve. They were just interested in this question that I'm going to pose to all of you, which is, can all of these bridges be crossed without ever having to cross a bridge twice? Right? I'm going to say that again. So can all of the bridges, all seven of them, can they be crossed um, without ever having to set foot on any of these bridges twice? Now, we've been in this topic of networks for a little while now, and so you guys know most of this information that's in the map is actually irrelevant. Like all of these buildings and stuff, we don't care about those. Those are unimportant, right? Um, even exactly where the bridges are unimportant. So there are lots of like kind of more diagrammatically representative ones. This is not really what the city looks like, but it's got all the same information on it. Do you see? Can you count the bridges? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh one is in the middle. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you guys one of these. I highly advise you to use a pencil for this. And I want you to see if you can solve this puzzle. Can you cross all of the bridges? Go ahead. How are you going? Has anyone managed to get all the way through? So this is like, for such a simple diagram, this is deceptively difficult, and now you're starting to realize why people historically were really interested in this, because they were like, it doesn't look like it should be that hard. There are only seven places you have to go across, but no one could come up with a solution, right? And everyone wondered, is it just that there's like a complicated solution we just haven't thought of yet? Or maybe, as some of you are maybe starting to think, because I saw how many of you were getting your rubbers out and giving it a go, maybe this can't be done. Maybe it's impossible, okay? Now, what we're going to do is try and unpack what is going on here. And I'm going to do that by connecting it to the topic that we're in right now and explaining, like, why do we care about this problem, okay? So I'm going to give you three reasons. And I'd love you if you have the heading already, the Bridges of Konigsberg. Maybe you want to make this as a subheading because I think it's important not just to know how to do stuff. You're going to work out how to do this in a minute, um, but also know why you're doing it. Like, for me, that's the main motivator, right? So I'm going to give you three reasons. Um, the first one's a history reason. Um, I asked you before about how many of you studied history. So I studied modern history when I was at school. And um, basically this single problem, this single problem is why we invented networks. Or in fact, um, as they called it back then, and as it's like called at university, um, we call this graph theory, right? So this whole topic, in many ways, like the fact that you guys are studying this in the course, the whole reason that networks exist as like a field that we study is because of this problem. This is where it all began. This is like the granddaddy of all the problems you've ever had to encounter in the topic, in the course so far, and you will continue to encounter. So for a historical reason, right? Um, the second reason is once we unpack this, once we work out what this has to do with our topic, we actually gain some further insight into the way these networks function together. As you'll soon discover, this network is actually kind of a special network and we'll work out why it's special and um, trying to solve this problem and realizing it's really, really hard is how we gain that insight, okay? There's one last reason, uh, or one last one that I thought of. Um, there are a ton of practical applications and that's the way most of the things in this course are. Um, I'll just give you two real quick ones, right? Um, when when the garbage gets collected, 
every week, right? The trucks have to go across all of the different houses they've got to get through, and they want to do that efficiently, right? That's a problem very much like this one. Can you think about how it's similar? It's like cross every bridge get to every house, as it were, right? So I know that seems like a really boring kind of thing to do, but we kind of rely on this every single day, right? Now, garbage collection is, of course, about picking things up, taking them away from houses. What's the opposite of that? Who in our society does the opposite of taking things away from houses? Yeah, mail. the mail. Thank you very much. So the postal system, right? Um, the postal system might not have to get to every single house every single week, but they'll get like, oh, you've got to drop off packages at these 20 places, right? And, or seven places. It's like, I want to make sure that you get to all of these and I don't want to double back. That's like a waste of time and money and um, fuel and all that kind of thing, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Um, this time, rather than going on your piece of paper, you want to go and do this in your book if you haven't already. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to represent this using the same kind of network diagrams that we've been using all the way through this topic. Okay? Now, there are seven bridges, right? Seven bridges. These bridges join together other kinds of things, right? So what kind of objects, you learnt a lot of words and terminology earlier on in this topic, what kinds of objects, being that bridges connect other things, what do you think these bridges should be represented as in our diagram? Yeah. These should be edges, right? Between, what are the things that are joined by edges? We call them vertices, right? So there are going to be some vertices on here, and the bridges are going to be our edges between them. Okay, so I'm going to just shuffle back here so that I don't get in the way of you guys seeing this, right? So, now this is actually a tricky question. I'm going to ask you guys, before I show you the answer, I'm going to ask you, we know that there are seven bridges, so there are going to be seven edges. I want you to think for a minute on your own, how many vertices do you think we can use to draw this diagram, right? Um, we could draw lots and lots. I mean, we could draw like one for every building if we wanted to. Clearly we want to have fewer rather than more. Can I give you a minute to actually see where might you put vertices? Go and try it on your own piece of paper. And then where would you connect them? Let me give you some time to do that first.